Hey guys, Mike here and in this clip I'm going to tell you how I feel about the 4th generation iPad, the one Apple released during the fall of 2012. It's called the new iPad Retina display, just like its predecessor, but in this video we'll just keep things simple and call it the iPad 4. I'm not going to compare it with the iPad 3 here, I already posted a detailed comparison between them and you should check it out. But the two are for sure very close, so if you have an iPad 3 and are looking to upgrade to the newer version, you'd better watch that clip first. Anyway, the iPad 4 is for sure one of the best tablets on the market. It comes with a 9.7 inch screen, so it's a rather large device meant more for home or office use and less for life on the road, especially today when there are so many good 7 to 8 inch tablets in stores. Design wise, the new iPad is similar to the iPads we've seen in the last years, sporting an aluminum body and a glass covered front face with either a black or a white bezel. It's just under 10mm thick and weighs about 650 grams which is around 1.4 pounds, so it's not the lightest tablet out there, but it's not hefty either. Overall, it feels good in hand, but if you want to use it with only one hand, you'll see that your arm is going to get tired quite fast. On the sides, the iPad packs the same ports and connectors we've been used to, with a volume rocker, a screen lock or mute switch, a power button, a headphone jack and a SIM slot on the cellular models. On the bottom, there's a speaker and the only thing that's changed from the previous version, the lightning connector, that replaces the 30 pin connector used on the older devices. It's definitely more compact and it's also easier to use as it's reversible and fits the port no matter how you stick it in. However, that means that you'll need adapters if you want to use the iPad 4 with your older accessories and those don't come in cheap. The iPad 4 offers a 9.7 inch retina display and you probably heard all about it already. It's bright, it shows popping colors and it offers a 2048 by 1536 pixel resolution which makes the content displayed on it look incredibly sharp. You're mostly going to feel the difference when browsing and reading text. So on the outside, the 4th generation iPad is pretty much identical to its predecessor. In fact, you're only going to distinguish between them by looking at that port on the bottom as the newer version packs the more compact lightning connector. However, the iPad 4 is a much powerful tablet than the 3rd generation is. Apple bundled their new A6X processor on it with a fast dual core processor and latest generation graphics. And the benchmarks prove that the new iPad is indeed quite something as it beats past all of its 10 inch tablet rivals. However, when actually using the device, while the iPad 4 is incredibly snappy and responsive, it doesn't feel like a massive upgrade over the iPad 3, mostly because that one was very smooth as well. Yes, some apps are loading faster on the newer tablet and the graphics can handle more complex games at ease, but right now there aren't many titles that can indeed push the iPad 4. We'll get them in time, but that's not going to happen overnight, as I doubt developers will push games that will only work flawlessly on the latest iPad and not so much on the other tens of millions of iPads already sold in the past. Anyway, here's a quick look at the interface and how the iPad handles the everyday tasks and multimedia activities. Oh, and I should mention that the new iPad still gets a bit hot on the back when used for more intensive tasks, but that's not really a big problem and if you stick a case on your tablet like I do, you're not even going to notice it. The iPad 4 packs two shooters, a 5 megapixel one on the back and as a novelty, an HD FaceTime camera on the front, which is a lot sharper than the older VGA camera on the iPad 3 and will prove handy on FaceTime or Skype. Apple also improved the wireless module on their latest iPad, adding a dual band solution that should offer slightly faster performances, but more importantly, it's going to be more reliable in wireless congested areas like offices. So while you might not really care about that too much, many of you will be happy to know that the cellular versions of the iPad 4 now cover broader frequencies, so will work in more countries. And yes, I'm looking at you guys in the UK and some other countries in Europe and Asia that couldn't use the 4G abilities of the iPad 3 but will be able to with the new model. I managed to use the iPad for more than 10 hours before having to recharge it while performing a mix of everyday activities and it's going to last even longer if you use it lightly or only for watching movies. Plus, there's a 12W charger now bundled with the iPad, which means that the battery will charge faster, but it's still going to take a couple of hours for a complete refill. All these make the 4th generation iPad the kind of upgrade Apple has been pushing lately. It brings some minor tweaks over the previous generation and it's faster and more efficient without adding anything spectacular. Thus, if you own an iPad 3 already, you shouldn't care that much about the new version. 
However, if you're in the market for a brand new 10-inch tablet, the iPad 4 is for sure an important option. There's almost nothing you can say wrong about it and it starts at 499 just as before, plus has the entire iOS ecosystem backing it up, which clearly outmatches any of its competing environments. But there are alternatives out there, good ones and even cheaper, like the top Android slates or the new Windows 8 RT and Windows 8 tablets. I can't tell you which one is going to be better for you, that's up to you to decide, but I will cover as many of them in my further clips so you'd better subscribe to my channel and keep in touch. And that's about it for today. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you all a bit later. In the meantime, let me know what you think about the iPad 4 in the comments down below. Cheers!